Hello again, and welcome back to the Geodynamics Lectures. In this lecture, we're going to continue on the topic of the basics of elasticity and talk about elasticity in terms of stress. We've got only one goal in this lecture, and that is to introduce elasticity and how it's formulated in terms of stress. So, our basic relationship is one that looks like this. We have a stress represented by sigma, that's proportional to the strain. That's represented as usual by epsilon. So stress is proportional to strain. You can see that in the plot over here um, where you have either a normal stress or a shear stress, and that's going to be proportional to either a normal strain or a shear strain, and it's a straight line on this plot. They are linearly proportional to one another. So for a 1D normal stress, for instance, sigma xx, we can say sigma xx is equal to e, some uh, value e that we'll talk about in just a second, times uh, epsilon xx. And that value of e um, would be for normal stress something called Young's modulus in 1D, and for a shear stress it would be the shear modulus g. So this relationship would be different a little bit for shear stress, but don't worry about that for right now. Um, but the slope of this line essentially is dictated by the value of Young's modulus or the shear modulus. Probably the most natural um, equivalent or thing that you would think of uh, as a familiar um, way of thinking of elasticity would be either a rubber band or a spring where you stretch it, and as you stretch it, the amount of stretching that is occurring, the strain, requires proportionally a larger and larger stress. So if you really want to stretch the spring, you have to pull um, with a significantly larger stress than if you want to stretch the spring just a little bit. The other important thing about elastic behavior is that it is recoverable. So what that means is when you apply a stress to the material and it deforms, we can think about that here uh, in the the diagrams that are shown on the right, the two plots here. The top one is showing us stress, the bottom one is showing us what happens in terms of strain. Here, between time zero and one, there is no stress. At time one, stress is linearly increased until time two. Then it's held constant from times two to three, decreases until time four, and then it's zero after that. And actually, the strain that the spring or whatever the material is experiences would be exactly the same and um, you know again I could take my favorite elastic toy and that is this ruler and I could say okay well now it's time one I'm going to gradually increase the amount of stress then I hold it constant and then as I remove that stress the material goes back to its original shape so when the stress is gone the strain is also recovered we can formulate this now uh, a little bit more formally, and we can do it in 3D um, rather than 1D. And so we can say for a linearly elastic material, again, stress is linearly proportional to strain. So over here we have stress represented by the princi largest principal stress, sigma 1, as being equal to this lambda plus 2g times the principal strain 1, epsilon 1, plus lambda times epsilon 2 plus lambda times epsilon 3, where in this case, lambda and g are things that are known as the Lame parameters. These are elastic material properties of the rock. And g is something that's sometimes referred to as the modulus of rigidity or shear modulus, uh, as we've seen in one of the previous slides. And just to note here, we're assuming that they're isotropic um, material properties. We could restate what's shown here in simple terms and say that the principal strain epsilon produces a stress that is lambda plus 2g times epsilon in the same direction and stresses of lambda times epsilon in the two perpendicular directions. That's just basically restating what this equation says here. Now of course we can do this for the other two principal stresses as well. The relationships look similar but just notice in each case that when we're looking here at, at sigma 2, this lambda plus 2g term is multiplied by sigma 2, and you just have lambda times sigma one, or sorry, epsilon 1 and epsilon 
2. So here we have lambda plus 2g times epsilon 2. And then the same thing would apply for sigma 3. We could flip this around and um, ref, you know, formulate virtually the same thing, just with slightly different um, appearance. And that is the equations for linear elasticity in terms of principal strains. So now on the left side, we have epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and epsilon 3. And you can see the principal stresses over here on the right. Now again, here for epsilon 1, we can see that the term out in front of sigma 1 is a little different than those in front of sigma 2 and sigma 3. Here we have 1 over e times sigma 1, and then minus, and this is the Greek letter nu, uh, lowercase nu over e times sigma 2, and minus nu over e times sigma 3. The same pattern holds true for epsilon 2 and epsilon 3. In this case, e is what we've already seen, that's the Young's modulus, and nu is Poisson's ratio, which again, these are both material properties of the rocks. In this case, if we want to restate what these equations are saying, we could say the principal stress sigma produces a strain of sigma over E, or sigma over Young's modulus in the direction that it's acting, and strains of minus nu sigma over E in the perpendicular directions. So you can tell already from that that if you squeeze one way, the other two strains are going to be in the opposite sense. So if you're shortening along one axis, you're going to see growth or, or expansion along the other two axes. So here we have now some elastic material properties of different rock types. And I just put this in to give you an idea of the range of these parameters and uh, to give you a table where you could look up what some of the values are of the elastic parameters of common rock types. So Young's modulus, you can see here in this column, has a range of 0.1 to 1.6 times 10 to the 11 pascals. So typical values that we're talking about here are 10 to 100 gigapascals. The shear modulus in the next column over has a range that's a little bit bigger, 0.04 to 6.4 times 10 to the 11 uh, pascals. And you, know, you can look through the different rock types to see um, how the shear modulus varies. And then the last thing there, the letter nu is uh, the Poisson's ratio. Typically rocks have Poisson ratios of 0.1 to 0.3 um, and as high as 0.4. All right, so we've had a taste now of elasticity in terms of stress. It's time to take your quiz, see what you've learned, and then we'll come back in the next lecture and continue.